Twas two nights before Christmas and all through the house, everyone was cringy, even this mouse. Hey Theater Thursday fam, you're in bed with Nathan and I. This is Nathan, we all named him Nathan. Hey you guys, what's up? It's me, Catherine, and for today's Theater Thursday, I thought that we would finally revisit an old series, a little series I like to call Bedtime Stories. I did a couple of these when I was really first starting off my channel, and it's been quite a while since I've done them, but amongst the hardcore Theater Thursday fam, they've kind of become like a weird little cult fave. So for those of you who are new to my channel, hello and welcome! My name's Katherine Steele and I put out a new theater related video on every Theater Thursday, plus I do bonus uploads throughout the week. If you haven't already and you'd like to, go ahead and hit subscribe, that way you get notified for all future videos, plus you get to join the Theater Thursday fam. First we take over Broadway, and then the world. And oh, I almost fell off the bed! Ooh, one of you guys just Snapchatted me. Hey friends, hey Theater Thursday fam. Oh yeah, if you wanna Snapchat me or tweet me or any of those newfangled social media things, at Kath underscore Steel. Welcome back to Bedtime Stories. Volume four? Volume three? Volume four. I'll leave the playlist down below also if you guys wanna watch more Bedtime Stories. Okay. So, let's get started. So, I don't think I've ever actually shared this with you guys, but my all-time favorite onstage mishap happened during Phantom of the Opera. For those of you who don't know, I played Christine Daae in Phantom of the Opera, and it was just the perfect mess up, because I don't think that it was big enough that it like ruined the show, or it, it didn't like ruin the integrity of what we were trying to do. And I don't know if it was necessarily big enough that the audience really, really noticed, or maybe a couple people noticed and they were like, that's weird. So if you don't know, act two of Phantom of the Opera starts with masquerade, which is a big masquerade ball number. All of us had quick change dressers on stage left. I remember it was Christine, Madame Jury, Raoul, Andre Fairman and Carlotta. So six people, really fast quick change out of these insanely lavish period costumes into other insanely lavish period costumes. Mind you, we didn't really have a lot of time to work out these quick changes. <laughs> so um, my dress, my dress was actually the easiest of all of them. Everyone else had layers and layers and stuff. Mine was just a zip and a cape. It wasn't that big of a deal. And I just had to take off like some wings and you know, whatever. But everyone else had really, really complete complex costumes, especially all of the guys. All of the guys were wearing like six or seven piece period tuxedos. So Andre, who's one of the opera house owners, is uh, almost dressed. He's dressed as a skeleton, for those of you who don't know the show. He's almost completely dressed, ready for the next scene, but he cannot find his pants. So uh, he's like, first off, mental image, he's walking around with a tuxedo shirt and then like skeleton pants. And he's running around going like, has anyone seen my pants? We draped it right over here and now we can't find it. Does anyone know where my pants are? So he is running around. They send someone to the dressing rooms. They cannot find these stupid tuxedo pants. And they're just like straight leg black pants. That's all they are. We have maybe 30 seconds until the scene starts. So this girl is walking by who's wearing regular black pants. We realize she's about the same height as the actor, so they switch pants. So this girl is now wearing like skeleton pants and Andre puts on these women's pants. So we get out on stage, the lights come up, and only when the lights are coming up do we realize, hang on, I think she was wearing leggings. So uh, we look over at Andre and we realize that he's wearing like a button down shirt and a tuxedo jacket tucked into leggings. Like they were tights. They were literally just tights. So we're doing this really, really serious scene. I'm crying. Everyone's screaming. It, it's probably one of the most intense scenes in the show. And he's just got his hands strategically placed because he's just wearing leggings. Another funny thing that happened during Phantom, I believe we were in one of our final tech rehearsals and it was just one of those tech rehearsals where nothing was going right. A lot of people were starting to get sick. There were a lot of technical elements, as you can imagine, that had to be worked out. So we're just finishing up act one. We did all I ask of you. I made both of my super fast quick changes. I'm feeling good. I run on stage for the end of the act there and the chandelier crashes. So I think, Raoul was getting notes or was like trying to figure out what happened next. I don't know what happened. He just had a brain fart and uh, definitely forgot to push me out of the way of the chandelier. Not the best, not the 
greatest. Uh, the chandelier didn't hit me, thank God. They, uh, they called hold when they realized that he forgot. I don't think I ever let him live it down. I mean, he forgot to push me out of the way of a chandelier. Like, come on. Speaking of miserable texts, we now come to Promises Promises. Again, a lot of people don't really know Promises Promises. That's basically like Mad Men the musical. There was so much drama on and off stage. It was just, it was a mess. We had this flat that had a swinging door. It was like a door hinge. And that was like the entrance to the apartment. And we would just put it, you know, wherever it was needed for the scene. So there were a lot of bits within the show where we would like slam the door in front of people and like stop them from getting in and stuff like that and closing it just at the right time. Well, something went wrong, but uh, she was like a couple inches too close. The door hit her full force in the face. They open up the door again for her next line. Blood is streaming down her face. It was so bad. Speaking of bloody noses and promises promises, there's a part where, spoiler alert, my character tried to kill herself in the show. I am on the sofa, passed out, and I start feeling something on my nose. I'm like, oh, that's weird. Why is my nose wet? What I had forgotten was that I get a lot of bloody noses in the summer and this was, you know, California in August. So I start getting this massive bloody nose while I'm supposed to be passed out. And mind you, I'm supposed to be passed out maybe for the next 15 minutes of the show, but they're like, picking up my body and taking me to the doctor or whatever, but I am on stage the whole time. I can't move. I'm bleeding. I have a full on like heavy going nosebleed. So while they pick me up, this was so funny. It was so James Bond. I was so cool. So there's a part where they pick me up and they're walking around the apartment. I realized that as part of the set, there are some tissues and Kleenex like on the set. I know that we're just about to pass it. So I like kind of flop out my arm so that it passes right on top of the box. And I just very, very casually start holding it up to my nose. Quality acting y'all, quality acting. So while I'm passed out uh, during that whole time, I'm in my lingerie. Go figure, a different day than the bloody nose, different day. That would be awful if it was the same day. And my my slip suddenly feels a little bit loose. And then I realize, oh, one of the straps has come undone. Okay, that's like not great, but it's not the worst. Then I remember, wait, I'm not wearing a bra. And uh, the other strap is starting to get loose. And I'm like, oh, oh no, what am I gonna do? What am I going to do? I like can't move. I'm supposed to be passed out. Luckily, my leading man started to notice that uh, it was coming undone. So he like tried to hold it closed for the next 20 minutes and it like didn't work. And it just kind of looked like his hand was right here for no reason. Uh, and we got a note about it. So it was nice that he covered for me, but uh, that was really, really terrifying because I was inches away from it becoming a very different kind of show. What else? Oh, also during this same show, oh my God. God, this show was a mess. Uh, the fire alarm went off in the middle of the show. So uncomfortable and we like didn't know what to do. So we just left. We like walked off the stage and the entire audience was evacuated. We were all evacuated. Crew was evacuated. Everyone in the entire theater. So there you guys go. Some more funny show mishaps. I think these are a lot of fun. So let me know if you like these or if you think they're funny or if you want more of them. <sighs> fresh content. I hope you guys are having a wonderful winter season. If you're celebrating any holidays, I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful holiday. I'm tired. Uh, I love you guys so much. You guys are the best. Happy winter times and holidays and whatever you're up to. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.